Good morning. Let's go for a walk and let me show you what has changed in the last few days. So over here we have this box. It is our little garden experiment. And you can see that there we have the garlic. And inside of that there are a few Thai basils. It's those smaller ones there. Hope you can see that it's a bit dark in there. And uh, here we have some chive and we have the coriander which is now flowering. And I'm hoping for the little um, seeds that are supposed to be very full of coriander flavor. And there's some other stuff growing in here. Here and there we have a lizard eating some leaves. Uh, but that's to be expected. It's part of the game. Um, this is supposed to be broccoli. We will see how this turns out. There are a few beans that have started to climb up on these things. And here is also something. If the corn were growing a little bit faster, then this guy would be able to rank up on it. But if it doesn't work out, well then um, this plant will probably then go there or to the other one. We will see how the corn catches up. This is uh, part of the idea of the three sisters. So you plant a corn, a squash and beans. Together this makes a meal, like a soup. And the plants also help each other. The third sister is missing, there is no squash. But it's like that. So probably the corn has to be there first and the bean comes later. Something like that. And then here is that. So we duck this strip along the wall of the future dock enclosure all the way to the end. And what is already coming up are these guys here. So that is the mix of sun hemp sunflower and corn. This is for biomass to get some roots in the ground and improve the biological compounds of the soil, not just minerals. And here you can have a close-up of these guys. And I just irrigate it by hand because I need to finish the drop, the drip irrigation. Yesterday I went to the village and bought the necessary pieces that were missing. So what's going to happen is here we have this, uh, yeah, this set of um, shut-off valves, and I'm going to add one more, like that one here. And this currently is for the trees. They look a little bit strange. I'm not sure whether this is too much moisture or too little, because this is forming a microclimate and. In between all these leaves, it must be moist. And when I have then installed the remaining parts over there, then this drip line can also be connected. So instead of standing half an hour here and irrigating by hand, this uh, will then be kind of automated. So you open the valve and come back after a while. I show you what we use to manage the irrigation in a moment, but let's uh, finish the walkabout here. So let me go to the other side, the light will be better. So here we have the summer grasses coming up very nicely. And I don't know what's going on with that tree. The tree did not make any leaves or new branches on this part here, but it does on the lower part. We don't prune them or do special care for these trees here because it's an experiment and to learn. And this is in preparation of something bigger that I'm working on. And at some point you guys can also participate. So the idea is let's plant some trees together and earn some money along the way. I will share details when this is all worked out. 
but there's going to be an investment scheme where people can participate because polovnia wood is something that has value in the market and it grows well here in Spain so definitely there is something where we can have some mutual benefit so all this is to learn how to care for these trees and uh, I will show you also the others that we have in different locations and this is the one that came back from the stump so basically the horses did the technical cut like they say so there is this idea to cut a palovnia tree after the first year and then it comes back the next year during spring and it grows quite fast as you can see in this case so it does work um, these trees here, they are not for wood, which is why they have all these branches very low. And it doesn't matter, they are here for shade and for biomass in the form of the leaves. But usually you are supposed to prune them so that these branches do not exist and therefore the trunk is cleaner and you don't have any knots in the wood. But that is then for the different situation. So. Here, they are lagging a little bit behind. They definitely needed some irrigation, especially the last one here. And in here, I plan maybe today or tomorrow to excavate a little bit. So in order to remove all this material, and I need it for fill over there. So. Then this pond is going to be a little bit nicer. I cannot really make it those 3.5 meters deep as the others. So this depends on the rain. Because our excavator doesn't go that deep. And what I wanted to show you is this palovnia here. So this one has received very little irrigation. And it's growing very, very well. So I would think the others over there, they are a little bit too moist. So there is no irrigation happening for that reason. And you can see the grasses around. They are also pretty green. Now that I'm standing here, this pile of gravel will be removed. And uh, we have a plan to build something here. We need a place that stays cool for our solar system, for the batteries and all that. So we want to build basically a box here that has a door and a roof and some air conditioning inside so that it stays cool during the very hot summer. And that is the designated place for this. So the idea is to put a concrete slab here and then build some four walls with a cinder block. And basically there where the trench is, this is where it ends, so that slab ends here before the trench and we use the trench um, as the boundary. And then this little building here is then kind of part of the dog enclosure at the end because all this is going to be fenced in and there will be a door so that we can enter with a machine. And over there you can already see this is a little bit lower there. And that is also for a door, but this is a door for humans and the dogs, of course. So that is the idea. And here where the sun, hemp and friends grow, um, soon, maybe this week they will arrive, there will be additional palovnia trees. The idea is to have quite a few trees in this future dog enclosure for shade and also to make this uh, whole thing a little bit nicer. Um, the dogs will not live in here, but uh, when, for example, we do an event in the compound, then we don't want to be, yeah, to have humans, which are unknown to the dogs, mix with the dogs, because something might happen. <laughs> These dogs are territorial, they are guard dogs, and we also don't want them to learn that all humans are so nice because there are some that are not nice. So it's better to separate them from people. And of course, not everybody is comfortable with these large dogs. 
they are between 30 and 50 kilo each and they can be as tall as a human so they basically can lick your nose when they stand up and not everybody is comfortable with that. Of course the yurt is going to be removed. The canvas is now already damaged. You can see it here. This uh, definitely is now something to throw away but we will preserve the structure and maybe use the yurt some other time in the future. So we will put it in storage and the wooden platform gets dismantled and we can then use this wood to build something else. There are a few things inside that we can also put in storage or use in a different place. So this is kind of taking shape step by step, but the planting is the first. So let me show you this here in the shade. So this is our application, Granha EU, which over time is supposed to also become a product for smallholders. So this of course is the very early stages, but this is now our irrigation checklist. And it works like that, that we have defined a few targets and sources for the irrigation. And the things have turned green because we irrigated already or it is in progress. And you can see at which time and where and what, what type of irrigation and the duration as it's supposed to be. Then you can hit the play button or the stop button to basically start the timer. So I manually irrigated. The target was 30 minutes and it took me 24 minutes. And the second line is the box. That goes very quick. I can probably reduce this. Um, this is prepared for automation. So the system could send commands to electric valves that are out in the field with some flow sensor to know that actually water is flowing. But for now, we do it manually, hence the checklist. And you see down there, there are a few notes, things that I want to implement. But this is already helping because it allows us to use our precious um, resource water more efficiently. The system has here under targets quite a few. Let me rotate this so that it shows up better. So there are targets. And not all of these targets are to be irrigated every day. So for example here A7 VTV that says three, that means every so there is a three day pause between irrigation sessions. And what is red has been stopped. So we don't want to irrigate that and the system calculates how much irrigation is possible given a certain source. So if I show you the sources. Um, there you have two sources. These are the two wells. Pozo means well in Spanish. And there is a solar panel and because of the solar panel the irrigation can start at 11 in the case of A1, the first line. And it will end at 1800 hours when the sun is on the other side. The well in A17 has a huge tank so the irrigation can start a lot earlier and then it will fill up once the sun has come around. Now let me talk you over here. So that is the patch where last year we had sun hemp and friends and also palovnia trees. We lost a few of the trees that were in the center, but those that were at the border, like this guy here, they have come back. There is another one. And you can see their one, it's a little bit yellowish, but it's growing. And there are three sunflowers and uh, more palovnia trees. There are seven in total. And as you can see, we have some drip irrigation going on. Um, some of it ran off, it's currently on the system. But it will stay here. And this has been seeded with some okra, red okra. Um, it's edible. <laughs> it's not known around here, but elsewhere in the Mediterranean. And I'm curious. We had a bag of uh, about 500 seeds or so, 500 gram of seed. And we planted it here and covered it with some horse manure. 
So the mix of straw and horse manure that has been composting, actually you can see it over there, there is the pile that our blind mare Saka Hawaii has produced. So we scooped up a little bit of it, brought it here and used it to cover the seeds. We'll see when this germinated. That was done, I think, on Monday or Tuesday, so just uh, two days ago. And the plan here is, I mentioned fill, so you see that there are quite a few holes in here from earlier ideas and experiments. So I want to dig out the pond a little bit and then use the material to fill these holes. And then when the Palovnia saplings arrive, they will be planted along this road here. So that this area also gets shade. And the plan is to make this area some, some form of a garden. Hence the irrigation over there and the fact that it comes towards this side. So the other lines that you see there, they will then be used once uh, I'm finished with the um, yeah, with the filling here. And now that I'm here, I can show you also that. So here's the road. And this road will be extended in that direction, which means that all this bad structure here to the left, this will go away. You might remember we had a fire and the roof there and the metal post and all this got affected by the fire and the firefighters told us the earlier we remove all this the better because it can be a problem. So I'm now walking towards that wall and this wall will be gone at some point. We remove things step by step so all this eventually will be gone and also all this. The only thing that we will leave standing is that cortijo there, that old house. And the things that are behind there, they still do serve a little bit of a purpose. But this definitely was so badly made that it makes no sense. That silo sits on a concrete slab, so it has a solid foundation. We will leave it standing because there might be a need for it in the future. But here, this goes away and then that road, this one here, can go straight. And the reason why we want to do this is later on this year, there are a few things to work out, but later on over there, I want to build a barn and I'm having a little bit of hard time finding the right people for this because I want to use the idea of an American pole barn because it's so simple and it is also very cheap. I talked to a few German carpenters but they were not very happy about this so they don't want to do that because the idea is it has to be solid and for all eternity and that is not the concept behind the pole barn. You build it well knowingly that in maybe 20 years you have to replace it. And I don't know what we need in 20 years, so I definitely don't want this perfect barn like things are being built in Germany. Um, there are cultural differences about what to expect and what not. But that's an interesting thing and I'm always torn apart by all this. Because I have all the different points of views and cultures inside. So sometimes I have a conflict with myself. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so that road will then connect to the skate and will then continue. And to the left, there will be that barn. And to the right, there will be an animal path. So that animals that are there in zone C um, will be able to come to the compound. And of course, once the dog enclosure is done, this will not be the dog enclosure anymore. They have had their breakfast and they are now sleeping because there's not much to do. That's dog life. Eat, sleep, and when there's something, spring into action. So they will move from there 
to over there once this has been enclosed. We do have the doors that are necessary, but we have not installed them yet because there's no point. They just get damaged. We wanted to do this a lot earlier, but um, plans change. But it will happen. One last thing here. You may notice that there are quite a few plants inside of all this dry dirt. So there is moisture down below and it's being protected by the crust that forms. And even here, where I turn around with the car, we do have them. And we actually have some rain in the forecast, so maybe it will actually happen. So somehow this keeps itself alive. And this is a very positive thing. Of course here it's a little bit earlier, it's a little bit easier because all this material has been moved around a little bit, except here in this very spot. But um, yeah, somehow they managed to establish themselves. Well, the surface has been scratched because you can see the stones there. So there was a pile which is now over there and therefore there has been some disturbance. Maybe that was enough to allow them to establish themselves. And there's also these things that show up as some sort of a pioneer plant. And I'm very happy to see this. And by the way, you might wonder why we have this here. So there is a hole and during winter when it was raining, we were fearful that the rain might uh, get under the house, which sits on cinder blocks that are not solid concrete columns. So it's all very loose. So we made this to stop the water from flowing that way. We wanted it to go left and right. Therefore, um, this whole area will be yeah, changed in the future because this house is temporary. So we are making some plans to replace it and move elsewhere here on the property. But that's another large project and it's not this year, maybe next year. So then when this has been removed, we can then reclaim the area and do something else there. So this will be filled and then you can drive in that direction to enter this area that is behind, which we call Zone B. So as you might have noticed, um, my focus is currently on the compound and not so much on all the areas around because we started to remove the cattle and we do have some and uh, we will have them for at least a year because they have been calving and now of course the calves need the cow and we will reassess in a year when the calves are yearlings to figure out what to do. I am planning a lot of things but of course it's all work in progress. There's nothing that I can really share but I will make a video. I have prepared a little bit material to explain some of that and this will have a lot of maps and aerial photos and all this so that you can get better understanding of the current train of thought. So that should be it here from the compound which is my current focus.